Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, which provide with a great opportunities to praise you. Let us grow, let us grow mentally and morally as, we, as well as physically through this sermon, and also help us help us to repent our sins that we committed during the past few weekend. And lastly, protect all the people in Sudan who have our, who have suffered in the in the war in their country. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, JCS. I'm so excited to be here today. It's a pleasure to come share again. I'm a little bit curious. Does anybody remember what I shared on last semester? Whoa, can we? <gasps> there are a lot of hands. Lucy? My tongue is like a spark. Whoa, give a round of applause to all those people who knew. Wow. Maybe it was the help of the candy last time, but it's okay. So, I wanted to come here today, and the title of my message is How to Live Your Life. And that seems kind of big and kind of serious, but I'll, I'll explain. The last few, few weeks ago, even though it seems like a long time before spring break, we had times of Easter, and we had a time of Good Friday, and we had a time of remembering what Jesus came to do for us, right? He came, and he gave us the perfect gift of grace, and we, we received something that we were not, we are not, and we will never be worthy of, right? And a lot of times, Easter, you go to church or you come to school and it's serious and it's emotional. And it's a time where we're really filled with this environment of what Jesus did for us, right? And then after, it kind of slowly falls to normal. So I kind of want to do connect what we learned from Easter, what Jesus did for us, to how do we live our lives. We listened about what Jesus did for us, and so what? How, even though we learned all these things, what are we supposed to do next? What's supposed to change, right? So I wanted to share about how to live your life. And the passage is from Romans 12, verses 1 to 2. And I'm not going to tell you actually how to live your life, how, what time to get up in the morning, what to wear, what to eat for breakfast, but we're talking a little bit more about life style. How will you present yourselves on a day-to-day -day basis? So let us see what Paul says, and let's read this together. It's only two verses, so I think we can all read all together, and it's big enough, hopefully, for those of you who are also in the back. Romans 12, verses 1 through 2. 1, 2, 3, go. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not keep conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And it's, it seems like a little bit of a pattern that I come up here and share something that we've already gone over during my homeroom devotion class, but we have gone over these verses in devotion time. And when we look over our verses in this semester for our devotion time, we always find a song that goes with it. So I've made a deal with my homeroom class, and we're going to share this song with you guys. So it repeats all the way throughout. So if you kind of get a hang of it and you'd like to sing along, you may sing along with us. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your body as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God which is your spiritual worship do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewal of your mind but by testing you may discern what is the will to you, therefore, brothers, by 
the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. But by testing, you may discern what is the will. We do these songs and they really kind of help us get the verse into our heads and remember it a little bit better. But I wanted to share with you guys that song, what we've been doing in homeroom class uh, and devotion time. So when we're looking at Romans, let's look at some background. Romans is, uh, maybe our homeroom class knows. What is Romans? Let's just, our homeroom class, one, two, three, go. Epistle. It is an epistle. And it is written to the people that live in Rome. Thank you. It's an epistle. An epistle is a letter. Paul is writing a letter to the Romans. They are the people who live in Rome. That's a city in Italy, right? And he's telling them, hey, I appeal to you, brothers. And he's sharing this letter with them. And we're going to look at each verse and break it down and see what Paul is saying. So, in the beginning, he says, I appeal to you, therefore, and appeal is kind of a, might be a hard word, but appeal actually means I plead to you, I beg of you, hey, I'm calling out to you, I want you to do this. Therefore, brothers, and by brothers, he does not only mean the men of that church, he also just means everybody. By the mercies of God. Not just by his own power, like, I want you to do it before me. I just want you to think of of me while you do it. No, he's saying by the mercies of God, by the gift of God. Something that we did not do to deserve, but he has given us. He's saying, hey, God has given us this amazing gift, so I plead of you. Let's see what he's pleading us to do. He says to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. And by bodies, Paul actually doesn't necessarily only mean your physical body, to give your body to somebody. It's, it, that, you know, the, how do you give your body to God? He actually means to give your, well, let's talk about what a sacrifice is first. In the Old Testament and before Jesus, the Israelites and the Jewish people, they needed to actually sacrifice animals and give sacrifices of grains as a way to repay back for their sins, right? But after Jesus came and he was the ultimate sacrifice, all sacrifices, no other sacrifices were needed and none of that was needed. So the way that we give our bodies is a living sacrifice. There does not need to be any death that happens. And we live our lives as a way of showing God that every day we want to present ourselves to God. So no death. And by our bodies, we're not just talking about our physical bodies. We're talking about what we do, what we say, what we think. Paul tells us, hey, give yourselves to God. And worship God through your daily lives. And this is, this is kind of hard. This is like a prayer that I have. Lord Jesus, help me give my life to you every day. The next part of this verse is holy and acceptable to God. We see the word holy a lot in songs and Bible verses. But what does it actually mean? It actually means set apart to be different, just like Jesus is setting us apart from what the world is. And it's our spiritual worship. And just like we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, spiritual worship is worshiping God through our daily lives. And the Holy Spirit is helping us do that. It's holy, set apart, and acceptable or pleasing to God. 
In verse 2, Paul says, Do not be conformed to this world. And uh, does anybody know what the picture is of down here? Yeah, they're making cookies. So the world wants to take a cookie cutter and shape us into the shape of the world. And, of course, we live in a sinful, fallen world. So the shape that the world wants to make us into is a sinful and fallen world. But Paul says, do not be conformed to this world. The world is continuously trying to shape us into the way that is sinful, the fallen world. But he says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Transform means to be changed. Do you guys know transformers? Yeah. It means to be changed from one thing to the next thing, right? Be changed by the renewal of your mind to make new your mind. But not only just what's in your head, this is connected to what we are talking about our whole body, our thoughts, our actions, our words. So when we give ourselves to God every single day, the Holy Spirit will come and he will change us and renew us into a way that is acceptable and holy. And the last part of verse 2 says that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God. Now, discern is kind of a hard word. Discerns mean to know what is and find out. Find out what is the will of God. What is the will of God? Will means his work. We, as we continue to work and give our lives to God, we will know what is God's work. What is good and acceptable and perfect. Now, we're humans, and it's not possible for us to be fully good and acceptable and perfect, but what, is Paul, what Paul is saying is that the way that we live our lives, the way that we have a certain lifestyle, should be different from this world. We are set apart. We're not shaped by this world, but we're living as a citizen of the kingdom of God. Where are you all from? Uh, just yell it out. One, two, three. Oh, oh many of you. Yeah, where a lot of you guys are from Korea. And so you are a citizen of that country. But before that, we're actually not even of this world. If you are a believer of Christ, then you are a citizen of the kingdom of God. Oh. So, so what? We heard in Romans 12, verse 1 through 2, that, okay, if we give our lives to God, we, we will be holy, we need to be set apart, we should not be like this world. So, so how do we actually live that out in our lives, right? Okay, you be good. What does that actually mean? In the later parts of Romans, Paul gives actually really specific ways of how to put this into our lives. And in Romans chapter 12, verse 14 to 21, there are kind of three topics he shares about, and I wanted to bring them, and we could talk about the three specific ones. There are so many ways in the Bible that show how we should be living our lives, but these are just three. So in verse 14, in verse 14, I will read it out. It says, um, Bless, it, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. So it says for verse 14, to people who harm you, the people who want to hurt you, to bless them. The world that we live in right now, the conforming shape that it wants us to be is, can you guys see it? It's an eye for an eye. You hurt me? Okay, that means that I can hurt you. And that's what the world tells us and a lot of the times that's how we act but in the perfect will of God even though we're not perfect and we're just working towards it he says to bless those who persecute you this can be coming in forms of maybe you pray for them maybe you decide to just step away from that type of situation but to bless them 
the second part of Romans, uh, in verse 15 and 16, Paul talks about how we should treat our loved ones. Those people around us, whether that's your family or your friends or just the neighbors around you. The world tells us to cut the line, to put me first. I am important and I am special and I should be the best and I should get the best. But actually, in verse 15 and 16, it says, rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep, to be together with those we love, right? When in joyful times, we are rejoicing with them. In sad and mournful times, we are sad with them. So we are not left alone. We are together and we live in harmony with one another. The last little section, verse 17 to 21, Paul tells us, how do we respond to evil? This world is full of it, and how are we supposed to respond to that? The world will say, revenge, just like eye for an eye. If you do evil to me, I will repay you back with evil. And sometimes in our heads, that seems like, that seems like, it seems like, oh, it's so, it's gonna, it's gonna make me feel so comfortable and satisfied. But in the Bible. He says, repay evil with good. Mm. He says, live peaceably with all. And a little section that I like, he says, and Paul says that the Lord says, vengeance, which is revenge, is mine, is God's. I will repay, says the Lord. We don't need to worry about trying to get back at evil. At the end, justice will come from God. So in these three different sections, to those who harm us, to those we love, and to evil around us, Paul gives us three ways that we should be reacting. This is the lifestyle of that we should be living in. And we're human. This is a daily battle. There are going to be maybe some minutes in our lives that we can give as a living sacrifice to God. But as we continue to move forward in our lives, I hope and pray that we will grow and continue to show compassion to those around.